Well, we did four videos on Namibia in 2023, and this is the first video for 2024. The discoveries just keep on coming. So let's try remind ourselves why all the excitement. Well, there hasn't been any oil or gas produced offshore Namibia. Why all the hype? Well, the potential is enormous, and in a few years' time, there will be production. So on this map here, we can see that this is the region here where all the drilling activity has taken place, but we will talk about the, the wider area in the coming slides. But the Orange Basin actually continues down across the boundary, down into South Africa, and you can see that uh, there's potential and as yet to be realised potential down in the uh, southern part of the Orange Basin, which is operated by Total Energies. Now, in this map here, done by Africa Oil, they uh, you can see at the same scale, I added this little insert here, which actually shows you the Starbrook block over in Guyana, uh, and then on into Suriname here. And what we can see is we can see this is the sort of similar scale for the billions of barrels of reserves that um, ExxonMobil, as operator of the Starbrook block, they've uncovered over the last few years. And other blocks and operations here is Orenduk and Quarantine, then across uh, into Suriname. It's early days for offshore Namibia, and there's only been a limited number of wells, but it's definitely an area that we're paying close attention to. And you can see coming up, these are the topics that we're going to cover today. Before we do that, let's just say, if you want this information, we now have a trove Namibia. So you get your hands on all the data from the most exciting oil and gas region in the world. Now we've got a special introductory offer there and it's valid until the 5th of April, 2024. It's uh, 3,950 UK pounds. And just give us an email and uh, you'll keep up to date. Now what you get for that is you get a technical database. It's a scouting service. It's a, an analog data source and it's uh, all one-stop shop. So uh, if you're interested, please get in touch. Now, moving on, Let's have a look at, uh, at Mopain. Now, Mopain is uh, located in the uh, southern part of Pell 83, which is operated by uh, Galp. Now, there's the uh, the partners listed over here, and uh, Galp have been looking to farm out uh, 40%, but now are going to wait until the uh, drilling program concludes. They have reported a significant column of light oil in reservoir-bearing sands of high quality. Now, we understand those sands are Senamanian Chironian, so Cretaceous sands, similar in age to uh, sands up and down West Africa, and uh, they look to be very, very prolific. They're drilled on to a, a deeper target uh, called AVO2, and this deeper target has now been reported to contain significant light oil. So two columns, and uh, we're yet to understand and find out any specific numbers on net pay and uh, porosities and well the operator probably aren't going to make those public one suspects for quite some time now the rig has now moved on to drill mopane 2x now the top hole was pre-drilled and after drilling the 2x well they're going to return to the 1x well uh, to perform a drill stem test now that's where they're going to try and flow hydrocarbons to surface and get a flow rate and understand what the composition is water depth here 1,500 meters or more, so it's uh, ultra deep water. And uh, pre drill numbers that were being bandied around 10 billion barrels in place. But we'll talk about reserves and resource assessment in a, a coming slide. So here are all the prospects that are, are shown in uh, Pell 83, and you can see, as well as uh, Mopain X1 and Mopain X2, you can see that we've also got a number of prospects here Scorpion, Cheetah, Honeybee. Eel, lead A, lead B. Now, cheetah, uh, we understand, is a, a carbonate uh, play, which is analogous to uh, the Cullinan well that was drilled here, the top end of uh, Shell's block. Now, we understand that that was dry, so um, does that up the risk on the cheetah play? Mm, possibly. Time will tell. Others are thought uh, to be more like the uh, Cretaceous turbidite plays of Mopane, Venus, Graf, Yonker, etc. Now, some discussion going around is that is graph smaller than previously thought? Well, we've said in the past that we don't rush out and have any confidence in numbers when you've only got one single well. A single well discovery does not really tell you an awful lot about the size, extent of the structure, how the sands or whatever the, the carbonates change. 
or the faults or the or the compartments what would be the overall recovery factor all sorts of things so it really is but this is table here that we've put together gives some idea of the recoverable resources that have been quoted and these are quoted in millions of barrels of oil equivalent uh, at various times from various sources now you can see some of these well-known sources here they come out and make an estimate now have they got information not really. Not really the detailed information that you can have. Interestingly, uh, this uh, Sweet Crude's reports here, this was a number that was quoted back in uh, January 2022 before the well had actually spud, giving a range of 250 to 300. And uh, a very recent report here, and it came from the Petroleum Commissioner of uh, the Ministry of Mines and Energy in Namibia, quotes 200 million barrels. So uh, it, on the one hand, the numbers uh, appear to be falling quite rapidly. But I mean, some of these numbers were very much guesswork. And you can see that uh, perhaps they've calmed down. Now, Shell, as operator, have never really made any comment about the size of graph from, from the, the get-go. So um, what we're kind of leaving with is, has anything really changed? Well, we don't, we don't really know. But uh, there has been some speculation on concerns about uh, reservoir deliverability. It may be a concern. I really don't think we have uh, too much information in the public domain, so it's a lot of speculation. Now, this was a IHS market uh, publication where they'd looked at the uh, prospect economic evaluation and gave a range of uh, technical resources here on the x-axis and an after-tax net present value at a 10 percent discount uh, measured in millions of us dollars now you can see here these are the curves they came up with now things have moved on but uh, one one thing that we can look at is you know we can look at the the current oil price and for a 200 million barrel resource size they're looking this range here if the um, economic evaluation was valid, then uh, well, we're looking at the order of uh, 800 to 900 million US dollars of net present value. So has Graph got smaller? Well, it's still a great size and still very, very economic if it moves forward. And uh, lots of this information, in fact, all of this information and a lot more. This is the uh, Trove entry that you would get if you subscribe to our Trove database. And that's just on Graph. Now, another example here comes from the uh, UK North Sea, and it involves uh, Griffin, which is a field up here in the Northern North Sea. I was involved in this a number of years ago, but I was actually involved around about the time of discovery. I was working for the regulator at the time, and uh, when Griffin came in, it was anticipated or much discussed as being a multi-billion barrel discovery, much as you see it happened at Graf. Now, a few years later, after some appraisal wells, it was actually sanctioned at only 50 million barrels. This is the AVO. You can see the seismic here shows where the oil water contact is. There is also gas above uh, at Griffin. And you can see that it has gone on to since produce uh, 138 million barrels to date. And uh, in total, in terms of oil equivalent, some 160 million barrels the difference being the gas production there. Now, here's the uh, the profile for Griffin. And so it's gone from being, with the first well, numbers of billions of barrels, sanctioned at 50, has produced 138 to date. So numbers do change. Don't call it on the size based on the first well. That's our advice. Here is our entry for Griffin from the Northern North Sea. You can see lots of information just at the push of a button. If you have got a global subscription to Trove databases, you've got all of this information at your fingertips. So let's move on and have a look at the Yonker well. This is another well in Pell 39 and it's operated by Shell. Supposedly 300 million barrels. Now this is again a quotation coming in January 2024 from the Petroleum Commissioner of the Ministry of Mines and Energy in Namibia. Now have the resources been scaled back here too? Well, previously, numbers uh, had been quoted of the order of 2.5 billion barrels. Now, that was a number of oil in place. Uh, it wasn't uh, what the recovery could be. But if you took the two together, it would suggest a very low recovery factor of around about 12%. 
which seems very low for, for light oil. Now, it is an older play than Graf, which is something perhaps, but it has been considered that it's got better reservoir deliverability. So, you know, we would expect the recovery factor to be higher or perhaps the oil in place is actually lower. Anyway, Yonker 1's the discovery well and Yonker 1A is described as being a successful appraisal well. Now, it was a 23 kilometer step out. Now, that's a long distance and, and really extrapolating from one end of the structure to the other on the basis of just two, probably eight and a half inch diameter uh, holes in the ground probably doesn't tell you about uh, the true complexity of the reservoir and the continuity of the sands, etc., etc. So, you know, more appraisal drilling is going to be required to, to really get a, a handle on just how big that is. Now, I'm sure that's what Shell, the operator, are currently busy doing with all the new uh, well results. And there's the, uh, the partnership in this particular opportunity. So it's reported that uh, Shell will be bidding farewell to Northern Ocean's uh, deep sea bolster. Now, there is the rig there. It's uh, been on contract to Shell since December 2022. It's drilled Lacedi, Yonker 1A, Yonker 1X, Cullinan, Yonker 2A, and uh, it's also performed tests at Graf. Now, Shell have elected not to extend the contract when it expires in, in June of 2024. Now, is that significant? Well, well, before it goes, it's anticipated that there's going to be back-to-back -back drilling planned for the remainder of the contract, appraising Yonker further and drilling at least one more exploration well. So there's still still a lot of work. And then Shell have decided that it, well, it's probably timely to, to sit back and let all the results come through, work up what the implications are from all the various logs and information that's been gleaned on all of these wells, have a look, revisit the seismic interpretation, await all the results of various analyses that they're going to be taking on, biostratigraphy, looking at the ages of these things and uh, working out you know, where the source rocks are, the maturity, uh, perhaps getting some information on the porosity permeability distribution, um, looking at facies, trying to do all sorts of sedimentological studies and all the sorts of things. This does take time. Now, I'm sure the financial people within Shell would love this period of time to be shortened as much as it possibly could be, whereas I think uh, really it's sensible. These analyses do take time, and when they do come back, it gives an opportunity to review what we've got and move forward from there. So the uh, bolster, not sure where it's going at the end of this contract, but uh, it's probably going to be back in the area before too long, I suspect. Now, in our Wells to Watch, we did a video on this uh, for the 2023 Wells to Watch. And uh, really, you can see that uh, for our 2024 Wells to Watch, which is a video that will be coming out in the next uh, few weeks, you can see that uh, we've identified quite a number of things that are happening in and around. So here's a blow up of that region showing a little bit more detail. We've got a potential basin opening well. Well, that's a Namib Basin. It's actually going to be drilled north of the border of Namibia in Angola, and that's operated by ExxonMobil. Looking forward, hopefully, to that well, seeing that this year. In Pell 87, we anticipate there's going to be the Saturn Superfan is going to be tested now. You know, uh, prospective resources here, over 800 million barrels of oil, and reported to be the same play as Venus. That's hopefully going to be drilled later in the year. We've got an ultra deep water well in Pell 90. That's the Chevron well. Ultra deep water Albion basin floor sands. Mopane has been drilled and Mopane 2X appraisal. We're going to get the results of that this year. Uh, there's also a deep water Orange Basin 1. Little information on this particular one, but that, that's closer to and on trend with Venus and Graf. And uh, we also anticipate in Block 3B, 4B, this is Africa Oil, and uh, we anticipate that that's the, uh, potentially the Wolf Project. There are 14 prospects, but uh, I think in total, billions of barrels of prospective resource and nearly four TCF of gas. We've got environmental positions granted for one commitment well in blocks five, six and seven. This is in Southern Africa. That's for Total Energy and an additional four wells if successful. So um, very, very exciting region. Lots to be happening. It's going to be a busy area, Namibia and Southern Africa in 2024. So now taking a look back at Pell 91 and Pell 56 now, this is the area shown here. It's the operated by uh, Total Energies. And first off, we did report earlier in the last video, we talked about the Nara 1. 
which was reported as a failure. Now, uh, a dry hole, according to uh, Total Energies, Africa Oil, they uh, called it a sub-commercial oil and gas find. Well, if you take somewhere in between the two, it sounds like there were shows, but it wasn't really that significant. So um, probably NARA 1. Going to be an interesting data point to, to calibrate the seismic and the AVOs in the area, the hydrocarbon indicators. Now, at the minute, we have uh, Mangiti 1X. It's currently drilling, and uh, we expect the results imminently. So uh, that gives you some idea of the chronology of when this video was recorded at the late uh, January 2024. So Total Energy is operating, uh, testing the Mangeti prospect. Now, the idea is that it's going to drill through Mangeti and non deeper and to try and evaluate the northwest extent of, of Venus just to see how extensive the sands are maybe even just going in towards the aquifer. We'll find out in due course, but a great data point to understand the distribution of sands within the Venus discovery. Now, Chevron, they're just up to the north here in uh, Pell 90, and it's anticipated that they're going to be spudding a well in October of 2024. Now, that's one we're going to be watching very, very closely. And uh, I hope they've pre-traded with uh, Mangeti so that they have a way to get more information and better understand what's happening just uh, across the block boundary from them. We also anticipate later in the year, Total Energy may move on down to drill Damara or Damara South by uh, the end of 2024 just to really uncover the uh, extent of uh, hydrocarbons within the block. I don't know if you saw our video on uh, Total Energy's uh, increasing their stake in the Venus Discovery, but uh, we put that out there just a, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, that's worth a quick watch. It's uh, just six minutes long. Now, our tour of Namibia would not be complete if we weren't to cover the onshore regions as well. And in, in this case here, we can see the Awamba Basin, and this is the onshore basin here. And we're going to look at Pell 93. Now, what's been happening here in the news recently is that 88 Energy have farmed into Operator Monitor. Now, this table here gives the, the equities. So this was the initial uh, joint venture. We see Monitor 75, Legend and Namco, all not involved in these deals, and 88 Energy. That was the pre-farming equity uh, or joint venture split. And then uh, with Stage 1, which is where Monitor pay for past costs and 2D exploration, which is coming up. Then they will earn a 20% interest in the venture. After the drilling of the first well, their equity will go up to 37.5. And after the second well, up to 45, which is uh, basically the last increment there. Now there's the forward timetable that's anticipated for this block. And right now, these bumps and lumps, well, they're just uh, basically, they're leads. So leads uh, seismic over them to, to, to better define them and move on. Now, in terms of the size of this thing, it's uh, 18 and a half thousand square kilometers. Now, 88 Energy, well, they say, well, that's 12 times the area that they have in the uh, Alaska portfolio, which is where they're also active. It's a very frontier region. We wish the companies here success, but we can't get excited yet. We need to see some drilling results. So in summary, it's a hugely exciting region and it continues to deliver discoveries. More wells are planned in 2024. Volumes quoted in the media, well, on the back of one well, taken with a more than a pinch of salt. I mean, we always say, be wary. Be wary of any numbers quoted. When an exploration well has just found something, we really don't have enough information to say how big it is at that point. In 2024, we expect to start hearing more about how Namibia will transition from exploration and appraisal to, well, appraisal and, and production, I guess. Production still not expected until, um, well, probably about 2028. It's, it takes a long time. These are deep water or ultra deep water, quite a long way offshore, and uh, it does take some significant planning and, and justification for the, the billions of dollars of investment that will be made to actually bring these fields on stream. So uh, thanks to, to Jonas for helping with some of the uh, info used in this video. And we hope uh, that we've been able to give you a, an insight, just a hint of all the information that you would find if you subscribe to our Trove database. We've got all the data you need. Please get in touch. Thanks for watching the video. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell, and please pass this on to your colleagues. We really want as many people as possible to become aware of the useful resource that we hope Trove News is for you. Thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you back on our channel before too long. Bye for now.